Hey, we were outside. I had to go get some lavender. And, um, cause I need some to make some more honey, lavender and vanilla honey infused. Um, it's going very well um, in the shop. So I had some fresh lavender outside and thought I'd uh, go out and get some. You see, cut some very fresh so we can dry our lavender for our honey infusion. But being I'm out here um, the other day, I wanted to get some, um, some rosemary. Um, so we can do a tincture together. Okay, so I'm going to switch the phone and um, we're going to cut some fresh rosemary while we're outside also. So later on, I can, when the lavender dries, I can do the honey. But for right now, we'll do the rosemary. So if you've got rosemary, you can, you can make a tincture. Okay, you can either use it fresh or you can let your rosemary um, dry out. I already have some dried, but I'm gonna pick some fresh just so um, you know you can use fresh if you want. Um, just depends on um, how long you want your tincture to sit. So, okay, so I'm gonna turn the um, phone around and we're gonna get down there where the rosemary is. So hold on. Okay, here's our rosemary. I have been cutting off of this all summer. So I am going to, while we still got really nice weather, I am going to still cut some sprigs and add it to my, um, to my little uh, basket. So we can take it in and um, you always just want to cut on an angle. Don't cut the whole entire thing and um, just cut you some sprigs. Leave, always leave some so you'll get new growth. And then I just cut three or four and then we're going to take them. We're going to take them in the house. Now, like I said, you can use these fresh or you can let them dry um i've done it both ways i really like them dried just because the tincture can go longer and um you don't have to worry about it um fresh is more um has a lot of aroma even when it's dried though, it does. But um, I just think you can make um, more and it just takes a little bit longer to do. So, and who doesn't uh, mind it as long as it um, turns out the way you need it to. And we definitely want this because this aids in your memory it helps with your uh, headaches. If you have migraines, it helps um, blood flow to the brain. It's antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial. I mean, rosemary has it all. And um, in order, I gotta stand up now, grab that one I dropped. Okay, now let's just pick all these. But yeah, you have so much that you can use rosemary for. It's great for hair loss, how about that? Make some and put it and rub it in your scalp. And um, you know, you can take 15 to 30 drops two or three times a day for, you know, your overall, if you have headaches or, you know, if you have migraines, it helps with that. And, um, yeah, it's a good, it's an overall good tincture to make. So, I want to make sure, I may not have enough to do, 
I don't know, we'll see. That's fresh. Fresh takes a little bit more to use than it does if you're using dried. But we'll see what we can do when we get in there. There's another one. I'm gonna make sure I got all the ones. Okay, well, look, look at all that that I left. And um, man, just by me touching it with my fingers, my hands are already uh, smelling like rosemary. So I'm like really smelling lovely right at the moment. And um, always leave room for new ones to come. That way you always have, look, there's a brand new baby coming right there. And right there, that's a new one. So you wanna leave room for your new ones to come. Don't overwater your rosemary. And you will always have some. Get that one, oh, I dropped that one. Okay, I think we have enough of our rosemary, so. Now we're gonna go into the house and uh, I'll see you in there. And we'll see what we're gonna do with this beautiful fresh rosemary, or we may use the dry depending on what we have. Okay, I'll see you inside. Well, we're back inside. And now I went around and I got all that we're going to need to make our um, rosemary tincture. I'm looking at my um, rosemary that I did collect outside fresh. Um, in order to use fresh, I'm going to use this as uh, to hold my rosemary in. Um, so I'm going to take the fresh. If you want to do one in fresh, okay, you would take all of your rosemary off, all these little pieces of rosemary, you would have to pluck off, okay, and pluck them off the stem to get all that off, okay, and then once you, depending on the size of your jar, or bottle that you want to um, use for your infusion. Um, it, you know, it it depends on how much tincture you want to make, okay? Depending on how much herb you will be using, okay? So let's say you're using, um, you know, a jar like that, that size. Well, you're gonna fill your herb at least half to three quarters, you know, with herbs. So that could be well more like two cups right there to fill that, you know, to, or not to fill it, but you know, to put that much herb in that, that size jar. And I think this is like a 16 to 20 ounce jelly jar that I had. Um, so, um, which are great to reuse and you can reuse the lids for, you know, for that, you know, to um, make infusions, you know, you can, these little pop button lids always save those. They're, they're gems, man. You can use these and their jars, but just depending on your size of your jar. So I would need more, more rosemary in order to do this size in the fresh. Okay, so we're not gonna do that that size today. Now I have this little bottle with a corkscrew. Um, this is the one I am going to be using. Now you can use this type. You can use a um, swing top, you know, uh, fermented um, swing top um, class little jar if you wanna use one of those. You can use a mason jar with a screw top with a seal lid on there. Um, just depends on the size. Now, like I said, if you're going to be using fresh, you got to pick all this off of your fresh. And then it would have to be enough, at least, probably right to there with my herb. So that's quite a bit. That's probably like a cup, cup and a half of herb. So 
um, if it's fresh. Um, so when you're using dried, it's half of that. Isn't that that I know? But so if you're using dried herbs, you'll use half of what you would use if you were using fresh. So today, for today's purpose, we're going to be using dried. Now, also with the fresh, while we're still talking about fresh, once you get all of that off, you would put all of that, you know, what your measure out what you think you're going to need for your size bottle. And then you're going to put it on your cutting board and you're just going to chop to get it, to get it chopped up. Not real small, but get it, get it, get it activated. Okay. Um, chop it up and then you're going to put it in your, in your bottle or jar. Now, four, probably four weeks, if you're using fresh, four, four to six, I would not go over six weeks, not with fresh, okay? Then you would put that in a cool, dark spot, okay, and let that infuse if you're using fresh, four to six, okay? So, and you'd have to chop it up. But today, even though I picked fresh, I just wanted to go over that, and I'm going to be drying this out. This is so much easier for me um, to use dried. Um, so today we're using dried for our tincture, and um, all you have to do is touch it. Man, my hands, they smell so good. They smell like rosemary. But um, this is, and you can just leave, let me just show you how you would dry out your, if you do not have a hot dehydrator. You don't need a dehydrator for your herbs, um, you know, like rosemary or oregano or sage, any of those. You can just lay them, okay, just like I did. You can lay them just like that. Just like I did this nice little pile. See? And they still have their beautiful, they still have their beautiful color. Keep them in a cool place. I keep them right on my kitchen counter. That's where I put mine. And let them air dry if I got the space. Okay? So look at that. And then look at that. It gets a little darker because it's dried. It's not brown. It is still green. So you're going to take your fresh and lay them out on a paper towel. And that's all you have to do to dry them. Within a week, they'll be dry. And then you can go and start making your um, tincture if you don't want to use fresh. Okay? So, but today we're using dried. Um, you're going to need your funnel to put in your jar if you're using a bottle to fill your uh, your liquor, okay? Because you need it to go in your bottle. So you'll need a funnel. Um, we need a bowl to put all of our dried, um, either a bowl or a pitcher or something. You'll want to use, you know, something to put in your dried herbs once we get all of the... Um, now, if you had a big bottle, you can put the stems in. You would just have to break them like so. Break them if they're real big to make them, if you want it to look pretty, you know, you can put it in there like that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to strip mine off so I can fill mine with um, more rosemary. But you can put the whole stem in there. Okay, and then what you would have to do is you would have to touch it, okay, to get it activated. And, you know, you will lose some of your um, things by touching because it's, they're brittle. They're going to fall off. So, this is why I'm not going to put my stems in mine, but you can. But for today, I'm going to take them off the stem and discard the stems. Okay, and um, I'm going to use my bowl here. I'm going to move my jar for, for the temporary for the moment. Um, 
And I have this, um, you can either use your hands, okay, either way, um, or you can use one of these um, herb strippers. And they, they have different size holes for your different size herb, okay? So you take it, you figure out which size is your hole that will fit through. And I'm thinking it's going to be the bottom one. Okay. So you would just take it. I hope I got this right. So let's see. And then you would just stick it in there. Okay. Like that. And then you hold your, hold your container. All right. And then we're going to pull it. Look at that. And it gets the majority of it off. And then the um, the herb falls into the container for the most part. But check that out. All gone. And I probably could have went up um, maybe one. Um, oh, I have oh I have a piece of sage. See my piece of sage? <laughs> it was it is in there from the other day. See my beautiful sage? It's all dry. But look how beautiful that is. That's still beautiful. See, you can just let them sit out and air dry. They're beautiful. It doesn't take long at all. But I'm going to put that to the side because I don't want my sage in my in my rosemary. Um, so let's just try one more. And then I'm going to do one up. Go up to the next, next hole and see. Woo, I think that one's the bomb. What do you think? And then just crush that. And um, that's what you need to do. Okay, so you can either use an herb stripper. And I believe I got this off of Amazon. I'll try to find it. Um, you know, but uh, but they are there. They really are a nice little. And it holds up to, I think, a quarter of a cup. It measures it up here on here. I'm trying to find it. I read it earlier. Yeah, one quarter cup full of, of dried herb. So, and then you just discard. I'm going to put this paper towel over here to the side so it can collect my um, collect my, uh, ro uh, my rosemary. So, or you can use your hand in my empty bowl and I just take it like so and I hold it in my hand and your hand's going to smell lovely and whatever is ready to come off will come off look and either way is wonderful for you to do. See? All done. All right. So, we'll be, we're going to go ahead and get this ready. And, um, we'll come back when we get all of this stripped and ready for the tincture bottle. Okay, we have all of our herbs stripped off, and this is what we ended up with in our bowl. So, if you just need to know measurement-wise, um, I think this is like an 8-ounce bottle, 8 to 10 ounces. Um, so, this is, let's see, now this is stripped off with no, um, no stems, no nothing, and uh, man, does that smell good. And that is, that is a quarter cup of fresh dried rosemary, okay? So we're gonna take this, I'm gonna, I don't need my bowl at the moment. I am gonna put my, my bottle um, in my bowl just because when I pour the vodka, which you need, um, 80 proof, you can use vodka, okay? Doesn't matter the brand. 
um, as long as you have 80 proof, okay? That's what you need. 80 proof vodka, and I don't care about the brand. Um, so first you're gonna take your lid. I can, you can use a corkscrew, it doesn't matter. Um, first of all, you're gonna put your, um, make sure it's good and clean, your container. And um, we're gonna go ahead and put our herb in. Hopefully this will go through those holes. So we're gonna take that. Let's see. I'll have to help it along, I guess. Yeah. There we go, it's getting in there. Actually, this is the um this is the only size funnel that I have that would fit that bottle, so. So I'm gonna have to help it along to get in there without doing too much banging. But we're getting it. Man, the house smells wonderful. So the bottle would, um, my hole got clogged up a little. The hole's not very big on these medicine bottles, but I like them. So I'll just have to do less. Well, we're right there, so we're getting there. There we go. A little bit more. think this would do great also if you didn't want to um, take your um, tincture in internally. You can use a small shot glass of water. Put your drops in there, 15 to 30. I would start at 15. Work your way up to the 30 mark. Um, you can do that um, two to three times a day as needed for like headaches and migraines um, or anything that's... Um, you know, if you have inflammation or if you're aching, achiness. But if you're using it for that purpose, um, I would start at the 15 drop mark. And like I said, if you didn't want to take it in your mouth, um, please put it in some water, you know, a little shot of water, um, and then drink it that way. Okay, we got a little bit more. Now, as far as for your hair, um, you can... Put that in a dropper bottle with some dropper, you know, a little dropper. And then take your hair, you know, up there like so. And then put your drops, you know, along your hairline and just rub. You know, where you're, if you're thinning hair, if your hairline is right there and you're thinning there, that's where you want to put the rub that. Put two or three drops there, rub that in. And then just um, take two or three drops in your hand, rub all that in there, and then just keep rubbing it into your scalp all over. And um, that promotes, um, that helps with hair loss. So, and it's a great anti-inflammatory. So if you've got achiness, yeah, 
it's antiseptic also, okay? So if you, um, you can use it, um, you know, um, for um, your, for on your body, you know, like rub, rub that tincture right on your body if um, you've got an achy spot. Um, I got a, that clogged up again. <laughs> I must have put too much. So, yeah, just rub it right on that spot if your arm hurts or your leg or, you know, whatever hurts you. Yeah. Use it right for that. Great for, uh, great for your memory. Rosemary's wonderful. It's not just always for cooking. It has a medicinal value. And, um, you know, God gives us all these beautiful herbs for us to learn from and to enjoy. And not just for, um, just for food. They have their medicinal place. Oh, there, it finally went down. Okay, we're just about there. I got just this teeny little bit that got stuck. Okay. Um, I want to make sure my um, funnel is all clear. Yep, the hole is clear. But look, I'm right there. So the rest is going to be filled with... Um, and we're just going to loosen that. We're not going to pack it, okay? Just loosen it up in your bottle. You know, let it be loose. Okay? And let it fall like, yeah, like that. Don't pack it down because then it takes longer and it gets a lot of air bubbles in your, um, in your bottle. You don't want a lot of air bubbles, okay? So, I'm going to try to do it on this paper towel. There's a piece of rosemary. Well, that piece didn't want to come out either. All right, we'll just put that in there like so. Okay, let's get to filling our bottle. Leave just a little, if you're doing one with a cork, you see where the, um, the, the funnel ends? You want to leave uh, enough space for your cork, okay? So put your cork in there. So you know you're about right there. So you want you to be low, just below your cork, okay? To give yourself some breathing room, okay? So if you're using a cork. Um, but yeah, leave yourself some space. Okay. Let's go. That out of the way. Okay, here we go. Your herb has to be very well covered, okay? You need to make sure your herb. All right, I'm gonna stop for just a minute and grab my um, bamboo stick. Cause we want to make sure before we fill it all the way, I'm gonna take that out just for a moment. Cause my vodka level is right here, right now. It's probably hard for you to see. 
But we're going to go ahead. Look, I'm just going to go ahead and push all that and make sure it gets, make sure it gets soaked with the vodka. That way you won't have any dried, um, any dried uh, herb that isn't soaked. Okay. Then you can finish filling up your, um, your bottle. Okay. Okay, and that also will help relieve any air bubbles that you have in your bottle. Okay. Okay, we're gonna put our funnel back on and now we're gonna finish filling it. Well, it's not gonna take much because um, we're almost to the top of it anyway. That's it. Well, I went a little over, so I have to pour some. Cause like I said, you gotta leave space for your cork and it went all the way to the top. Okay. But I am going to put that rosemary back that came out in the liquid. So give me a minute. I'm going to use my bamboo. We don't want to um, not use all of our herb, so. A little bit more. Okay. Then we're just going to take that and stir that around. Make sure all your um, herb is below your vodka before you put your um, cork in. Okay, that looks good. Find my cork. Then we're gonna put that cork right on there. Put it down there really good. And um, it's going to float like this until it settles. But we're going to put a nice label on here. Um, and you can use, you know, you can use tape. You can use a label. Um, you can use a post-it note. Um, but whatever it is that you use, put your date for today, the day that you made it. And what, you, what you're putting in it, which is your, um, which is vodka, 80 proof, and your rosemary, and dried, you know, and where you should put where you got your rosemary. Mine was in my yard, um, whether you got it from an herb shop or, so you know where you got it. So the next time you want to make some more, you'll know what to do and where to go. Um, but, you know, 80 proof vodka. And um, the date, um, it's shelf life. It's not going to go bad as long as you keep it in a cool, um, cool, dark spot. Now, the reason why you put your date on there is when you're using dried herbs, um, six to eight weeks, this can stay in here before you strain it out. Okay, so every now and then, You'll want to go in there, wherever your cabinet is. I usually use my kitchen cabinet, the one that I'm in the most. Um, you know, you know, at least twice a week, you know, a cabinet that you're in at least twice a week. 
um, keep it in a dark spot and just remember to go in there and just take it and just go. That's why you leave a little bit of um, space. See? So you can just do that. Isn't that crazy? That's wild, isn't it? How it just floats. And as you do that, you're um, infusing that rosemary in with this vodka to make your tincture. And then you'll be able to strain this in six to eight weeks. Let me back up that glare. Um, six to eight weeks to, uh, how about that? And the cork does work, so it doesn't leak. So cork is a good idea. Um, six to eight weeks. Keep your um, some, but I'm going to do mine for eight. Okay. So eight weeks, I will be straining out my uh, rosemary tincture. Um, I do have a few friends and family members that get headaches and migraines. Um, so I think they will be... Um, will be thrilled to try the rosemary to see if it gives them any relief when they get migraines or headaches. Um, especially if you're an allergy person, you know, oh, it's awful. I feel for them. Um, and uh, so every now and then, give it a shake, upside down, cool dark spot, eight weeks, six to eight weeks, strain it, Put your, um, discard your herbs that you strained. Put your, um, tincture in a, um, dropper bottle. Um, or, or I can use this bottle. You know, you, you can use a dark bottle would be better. Um, or you could keep this in a dark cabinet. Either or. If you want to use a dropper bottle, use an, um, you know, an amber colored um, dropper bottle, put your label on there, you know, what it is, just like you did when you did this, you know, that it's rosemary tincture and what it's for. Um, I usually put it that it's for good memory, um, brain flow, for cognition, um, migraine headaches, um, it's anti-inflammatory, you can use it, and, and what the dosage, 15 to 30 drops two to three times a day um, by dropper, or you can mix with water. Um, and if you're using it for hair loss, like I said, put it right along your hairline, rub it in, and <clears throat> the men should love that, you know? Um, you know, the ones that are getting hair loss. Um, so it does help with the hair, makes your hair smell wonderful, gives it good growth. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get our label made for our rosemary tincture. And um, glad you stopped by today, and um, we got to make this together. So uh, we'll be back, uh, hopefully, um, when it's all done and said. And uh, we'll help some people out with some uh, rosemary tincture. If you like our video, please like and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Give me a comment below. Let us know, do you use a rosemary tincture? And does it help you? And for what symptom of yours do you use a rosemary tincture for? Let us know. Um, we're all here to learn together. And, um, and if uh, we can use God's beautiful herbs to help others and ourselves what a better way to share okay we'll see you real soon on the homestead god bless you and be well bye for now